It's the Benz Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this If we sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea We are go sippy here oh, Hard time scrolling for your long shorts oh, You might learn something you never know Could oh, let you find And she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind me, myself, and I, that's what I got in the end. That's what I found out. And it ain't no need to cry. I took a vow that from now on I will be my own best friend. Shake it, me, myself, and I, that's what I got in the end. That's what I found Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I had, what is it? Biscoff. I had one of those Biscoff like biscuits for Americans. Those are cookies before recording. Um, and that was like the first thing I had all day. So I don't know. I think it got me excited. Anyway, it's me, Kalechi, the baby girl in the place to be. And it is what? My birthday week. Yes. So if you're listening to this on Monday, 2nd of October, then my birth my birthday is Thursday, fifth of October. And I'm just getting more excited. Like, you know me, if you've been listening to this for a while now, you know that I love getting older. Like, I just do. I just do. I just do. <laughs> I don't know. I just I love it for the young babes. I love what they're giving. I love what they're doing. But I don't know. There's just something about knowing that I've been blessed with another year of life. That is just so cute to me. So, um, yes, talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm funnily enough, I'm now kind of excited that my birthday is coming along just because I've got an announcement also, not just because, but also because I have an announcement to make so yeah but before getting into that you are listening slash watching s-y-m officially known as say your mind unofficially known as what what that's right suck your mum and so for those who don't know but I think quite a few of you do because I see you kind of migrating from the audio um YouTube version of this comes out on a Tuesday at 5 55 p.m London time now what you need to know is that it's not the same <laughs> it's not the same the editing that Jonathan does for the YouTube version is hilarious no that's right <laughs> oh, no that's right <laughs> so you just need to check it out it's a completely different experience those who have been like who listen to the audio on a Monday then go and watch it on a Tuesday know that it's just a completely different experience and also most times I'm online when um it premieres on youtube on a tuesday so we chat so in case you don't know how to get to the chat box you'll see like a live chat little icon um it's not the comments there's literally a live chat icon and if you click on that then you see us having conversations in there so you can join that way and in celebration of my birthday um saturday 7th of october is the say your mind live show at peck and playground part of peck and playgrounds comedy festival and that'll be like my that will be my last show of the year and i cannot wait let me tell you i am done <laughs> i am done so i've got like panel discussions that i'm part of but if we're talking about a show that is dependent on me <laughs> That motherfucker's done once we hit Saturday, 7th of October. Peckham, 1 p.m. Let's get into it. And what I love about the fact that I'm returning to Peckham, because remember Peckham? No, the first live show was at Boondocks in Shoreditch. And then after that, it was in Peckham, right? And then it was lockdown. And well, Lev then lockdown. Lev lockdown. Um, anyway, so then after that, it was the Bloomsbury and then it was Sadler's and then, you know, it's just grown a lot. Right. So I love that I'm returning back to Peckham and I want to bring back the old school bits that we used to have in Peckham that we did have in Peckham, which was really fun, um, where you get 60 seconds and only 60 seconds to come on stage and tell me what is on your mind so you can say your mind about whatever it is that you want to talk about 60 seconds is all you've got though because I know some of you you love a chat 60 seconds right 
Um, so that will be happening on Saturday, 7th of October. And I just think it's a beautiful way to celebrate how far I've come and all of the wonderful things that have happened. Because like I said, I haven't really sat down to process it. Now, I was meant to go to the Labour Party convention in Liverpool. Then, <laughs> then, <laughs> anyway, so not doing that now, which is cute. That's fine by me. And I will be... Um, booking myself a hotel room instead because I just want time to myself you know I just want time to myself so um Saturday 7th of October once I finished the live show at Peckham Playground um and we've done our bits and we've had a great time and I've signed your books and we've kikied and we've ha I am taking myself to a hotel getting into some comfy pjs getting myself some food and just crashing out watching or just like watching films I don't know what I want to watch because one of my favorite films is City of Angels but I think it's going to make me sad to watch like Meg Ryan like die so I don't know I have a think about what I'll watch but I just see myself in comfy PJs cute hotel room and just being like girl you motherfucking did that you motherfucking did that <laughs> So yeah, that will be my treat to me. But on my actual birthday, on a Thursday, I'm actually going to somebody else's event. Yeah, I'm going to somebody else's event. Um, and then I think a very lovely friend that we all know on this podcast decided that they were actually going to throw me a birthday party. And this is what I mean. This is what I mean. I can't settle for rubbish when it comes to romance. Um, even though I'm using the term romance lightly, right? But the reason I say this is because if you have sick friends who love on you in various ways, there is no way that you're going to tolerate nonsense and cheapness and non like just higgy hagger from any like romantic prospects. Like I just can't. Ugh, makes me sick. Yuck. Yuck. What do you mean? I've got a book published and there was like no gift. Like it, I, like that should be like a push present. They should like I just feel like. I'm not necessarily big on romance per se, but I'm big on attention. Like, show me you're paying attention, right? And people talk about love languages and like, oh, I'm not really a gift. To, like, no, no, no. I don't even think, I'm not even a like big on like gifting in that way. But when I gift my friends things, they know I've paid attention because I get them like the cutest things. And I'm just blessed because people give me like lots of gifts and stuff. But anyway, I say all of this to say it's, you know, having friends that like, of course, you're going to celebrate your birthday. Like, what the fuck do you mean? And we know you love a karaoke. So you're going to have karaoke on your birthday. And I'm so excited. I'm so like, I hope I haven't jinxed it with the bad vibes people that like to listen to this show sometimes. But I'm just excited that I get to. Do, I feel like that's my thing now. Karaoke yearly. Like. Every birthday, I'm going to have karaoke in one form. Kind of the way that, like, Diddy has, like, he's all white parties with cocaine. No, sorry. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, my party will be karaoke. Kelechi's karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just touched. Like, my friends do the sweetest things for me. Like... For instance, Kevin Morosky, you all know Kevin Morosky, our baby boy. We love him so, so much. And he'll be at Peck and Playground. He'll be there on Saturday as well. And I know he's going to bring us vibes when he gets on the stage um, to chat with me. So our baby boy, Kevin Morosky, is going to be there. But one thing about Kevin Morosky, because he knows all of the things that I do and have to sort out and just be in my life, right? Whenever we go out for dinner, Kevin never lets me pay. Like don't put feminism or whatever you want to say to the side for one second we're not talking about that we're talking about a friend that's just like when you are with me and we go to dinner you do not pay so you know i'm gonna have my sticky toffee pudding <laughs> oh i love sticky toffee pudding i love sticky toffee pudding spotted dick um jam roly poly like you know all of like the primary school desserts made properly like I fucking don't get me started. Oh, you know the sponge cake that they put the jam on top with the desiccated coconut. Ah, oh, I can I can murder that right now. Yum. Clearly, I'm saying all of this because I haven't eaten properly. I had the biscoff, like I said, I had two two biscoff, and I'm fucking losing it. But um, 
Oh yeah, and while I remember, big up Pod Bible. Um, you spelt my name wrong, but I love y'all. Um, yeah. Um, so yes, Kevin doesn't let me pay when we go out for meals, and I just feel like a baby girl because, no, seriously, why am I paying? The, with all of the things that I've done, just and the person that I am, forget all of the things I've done. Take it away. Take it away from the labor that I, you know, that I perform for society. Take it out of that, and just focus on the fact that I am a baby girl. The original Ben's P. Are you nuts? Well, no. The original Ben's P would actually be Mary who gave birth to Jesus, because you can't get more Ben's than that. Like you're pushing out the Son of God. That is a Ben's Panani for real. God said, you got a pussy where me looking for. Sorry. Sorry. Um. <laughs> so like, I love when that my friends love on me. And I think that because I've been whinging on, well, not necessarily whinging, but expressing my sort of discontent with like, oh, I don't get this. And I don't get my friends like, oh, okay, we've heard it's enough. And so I'm going to have a party um, and I can't wait. And yeah. And then there's Lewis Harris Tench, who um, phenomenal singer, lovely, lovely, lovely baby person. And Lewis got me the, I don't know if I've said it on the podcast already, but um, Lewis got me the most beautiful flowers the other night. Um, they were dropping me home and um they were like okay wait i'm going to go and get you something and came back with like the most gorgeous flowers in the color of the book for of my book edge of here and i just looked at my life and and then on top of that then we've got jonathan that doesn't want anything from me it's just like i got you going to help you um edit the youtube version in fact I, jonathan bullied me into doing the youtube version of this you know bringing this back um, I've got all of these wonderful people about around me. Annie, Annie scares me because of her devotion to making sure that I do my best and I get the most from what I'm doing. Like, I rate it. Maria, like, I've just got, like, just amazing friends. Richie, who I can always kiki with, Hodan. Like, I've got, and of course, my bestie. You all know my bestie, Lammy. But I've just got friends, um, some who I haven't named, who proper love on me. And so it just means that I just can't tolerate nonsense. So if I'm like, I just can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do nonsense. I'm so sorry. When my friends are going all out, why would I be taking Higgy and taking Hagar? <laughs> Not me, child. Not me. You know, like, and I think that that's important. That I feel like your friends can set pace. No, Seeing how if you're entering anybody's life look at how their friends are treating them if you're coming any less than that like you should be trying to outdo the friends as far as i'm concerned you should be trying to outdo the friends i'm just saying this generally by the way but i'm just saying that hypothetically speaking this is why i love my friends because no one can come and take me for idiot because i've got sick friends um yeah so i'm very excited and i feel loved on the full moon in aries wore me out it wore me ragged fucking hell because obviously being an aries rising i had the full moon in my first house which is the house like literally of your physical body i was so sleepy we thank the most high that i still managed to before going to the africa rights festival organized by the royal african society i managed to get everybody's month ahead readings out for october so that's done and then october will be for november you know that's how it rolls basically um got that done did everybody's email tarot readings that they sent through and i've added also um on my website now because you know when i do the one question email tarot readings i say it can take up to seven days for me to get it to you i've also added an express one now so i get it to you within 24 hours if you get that one but don't get the usual one and then say oh please can you just do no 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 go and get the express one okay so yeah life is cute i'm waiting for things to be delivered because i actually don't know what i'm wearing for my birthday and i don't know what i'm wearing for the seventh i've got cute potential things but i need to for them to arrive so 
Anyway, we'll see how I get on with that. I've really been talking, but I just needed to say all of the things. And I'm sure even in saying all of the things, I've missed out some things. In case you don't know or hasn't, you haven't seen the title of today's episode, I'll be speaking to the amazing Francesca Ramsey. I love her so much. I, ah, uh, I just love her. So I'm really excited that we'll be doing that in the Share Your Magnificence section. What else have I done this week um, as I'm harping on? Yes, I had my closing ceremony with Laurence. And, you know, I was doing my womb healing and all my body work stuff and um, inner child ceremony. I was doing all of that with Laurence. It's all part of um, a kind of a, a program, basically. And it felt bittersweet to be like, I'm done now. But I've seen such a transformation in myself um, since adding... Um, this work with Laurence to the all the other things that I'm doing in terms of spirituality it has been a journey and I so love that through it um, I made a friend I made a sister through it as in through you know as in with Laurence like it's so beautiful like all the challenges that have come through during the time that we've been doing this work together I'm just looking at it now as if as if I'm looking at through my rear view mirror like can't touch me and then the book you know came out during this whole process as well and we even had a bit of a break when things were just very wild we had a bit of a break but even the break was informed by the amount of work that we had done and how deeply the work we had done how much it touched me and being so much more compassionate with myself and I think that therapy and all of that is great love therapy but if we're really talking about compassion I love the work that I've been able to do with Laurence because it, it meant like when I'm on my you know when I'm having my bleed or whatever before I would still bang gym I'd go for a run I would do this I'd be running around running around even though there are still things that I need to do on those days like take left to nursery this that and the other maybe take a couple meetings I've slowed down a lot during the days of my bleed I've slowed down a lot and my god it's made me just feel so much more enriched and I just love it, like really centering myself in my practice is has been just a phenomenal experience. So if you want to take part in the um, this, what I've experienced with Laurence, it's called the Azoiwa Program. And it says here, with the tools of this program and the guidance and gracious touch of Laurence, because you get a bodywork session as well, where she does like, um, it's like um, a massage session, like physically it's like a massage session, but you do like spirit work as well, which has been amazing. Um, anyway, back to this um, gracious touch of Laurence. I have explored the depths of myself and I did not know um, needed my attention and presence. I've reprogrammed the perceived shame of this sacred time into joyful pride to be a woman and now stand unshaken in the power, beauty and softness of um, that reside in me. I love that, that Ua wrote that. But about the programme, the Azoiwa programme is a four month long healing programme for any woman who needs long term support as they step out of the shadows, awaken their true selves, experience expand their capacity to hold space for other individuals and their communities and heal lifelong conditions about womanhood without apology. Um, you will need to release what is no longer working, build emotional resilience so you can better navigate your internal and external world, become a risk taker, allow your fierceness to thrive without being contained and focus on being a fully integrated woman. You will also need to make yourself a priority. Now, that sounds simple until you have to do it. It's only th like through th doing this program and, you know, coming back from Peru and all of these things that I just realized how little I prioritize myself with a lot of things that happen. Like, even if we're just talking about in the online space, I'll know that I don't really want to be online like that. Somebody will be like, oh, actually, this just happened, you know. And, you know, lots of people are talking about something and it's like, oh, I need to help with the conversation to amplify or to kind of like consolidate it and I had to just in certain points or at certain points be like you know what nah I, I y'all got it y'all got it like I, you're you you lot are good I'm stepping back okay and that is courageous for me because I only you know previously understood myself in the through the lens of how I'm of service to other people and how I make other people's lives easier but who's focusing on making my life easier you know so through this time you know on, you know doing this program I just think it's been phenomenal so yeah if you want to um, join obviously it's you know you're investing in yourself because it, it's a lot 
not that it's a I'm not saying financially it's a lot I'm saying that what you get from it is a lot so it's an investment is needed basically so the website is m-o-n-i-a-s-s-e dot com that's m for mother o-n-i-a-s-s-e dot com um check it out but Laurence thank you so much for being a light for me and holding space for me so I can process some of the more challenging things that come up from doing all of the things that I do when people say to me you're so strong you're well done for all of these things like thank you for all of this work and it's just like fam sometimes I need somewhere to put it so thank you Laurence like big up yourself so I had uh, my closing ceremony, like I said, I recorded, I went back to the, to do a recording with the Musicians Union or for the Musicians Union. Because if you call them mus- um, the Musicians Union, it's my voice. That's the automated thingy. And they needed like extra things. So I got to do that the other day. That was cute. And then I went for a lovely lunch with my baby girl. Um, and then after that, I had to get to talk TV to talk about this statistics, this report that came out. I think it was with The Voice, The Voice and a one other organization just gone out of my head that came together to put together this report about the black I guess experience in the UK and it said less than 49 percent of black people in Britain are proud to be British and so went on um Vanessa Feltz's sh- uh, show on talk tv to talk about that and that was like very very interesting um then Africa Rights Festival that was last Saturday that was really wonderful thank you Yomi Shode thank you for the to the Royal African Society um it was great I loved Africa Rights Festival it was great to talk about the um book talk about Edge of Here as well as um having your heel your heel Kamara Onono to um play with his band to play uh accompanying me as I read from an excerpt from Blue so yeah, it, I've just had a great time and thank you to everybody that came through. I feel like this year, but lots of people have showed up, don't get me wrong. People are showing up to things, but I just feel like generally it's quieter, but I think that maybe that's just because he lives for you, you know? But let's see what Saturday's like as we close out for the year. And then after Saturday, that is the last live show for the year. I'm so glad, like I said. Um, and then you'll probably catch me April, April back again um around april we'll say anyway let's see what happens but around april be back again and for another live show but between then between now and then nothing maybe panel discussions i'll be there but me solo doing nah fuck that (laughs) fuck that i'm exhausted fuck that so as you know when it's my birthday i like to give you lot treats as well actually before we go into the treats that i want to give you let's look at the gifts that i've been sent recently I've been sent some cute gifts and I've actually been using them and not saying <laughs> like this blush, this brand, um, Ate Beauty, A-T-E-H. They sent me um, a selection of blushes for, you know, like makeup. Ah, this one is so nice. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a very orangey blush. They sent me different ones. Um, blush of Dreams, Radiant Rav is this one that I'm looking at they sent me so many um well not so many a few and um i love it hi everyone introducing my blush of dreams which is a which is rich in pigment it will help you to glow and is abundant in skin loving hydrating olive shea butter and jojoba it's felt so good on my skin sorry i didn't say sooner like they sent it to me and i took it home and I've been using it and just didn't say like and nobody's even asked me to say anything I just remembered that I really like it and I haven't said that I like it so thank you for these um blush uh, blushes I'm really enjoying them and if you want to um look uh look you know you should know um this program Ate you should know Ate's page anyway but it's Ate A-T-E-H-J-E-W-E-L A-T- E H J E W E L um, on Instagram. So Ate, thank you so much for these blushes. They're so gorgeous and I love how great they feel on the skin and the pigment and how bright they are. Because you know me, I'm I I've really been watching these TikTok girlies, you know, because now I'm like, why am I not doing um orange blusher? You like an orange blush. So this will help me to experiment more. So thank you, Ate. I love 
I love the blush. Thank you. And then somebody sent me lots of um, stationery. This is so cute. Is this a, like a woman in a hijab? Thank you for everything. I got these cards. The Unwritten is the brand. Look at that. I'm going to give that to my good sis, Hodan. So pretty like her. I'm going to give that to her. And then this one says, you're the best gift. Oh, they're cute. Look at that. Just cute stationery. I love cards. I love being able to give unique cards. I can't take those generic cards. I can't like, I don't like it. Oh, this one looks like me. It says, let's party, baby. That one's cute. Um, oh, this one is literally me on the pole. Two times for the baby, uh, for the birthday, bitch. I love that. B B bitch is spelled B-I-S-H. And it's me on the pole. I'm saying it's me on the pole anyway. I love this. The unwritten. Look at that. Look at this card. If that ain't me, if that ain't me. Woo. Yes, I think that is me. <laughs> two times. for, And it's going to be my birthday. And then there's another one that's two times for the birthday beach as well. And we're getting fucked up tonight. I love that card. Oh, thank you for sending me all of those cards. I now have things to give my friends. Um, yeah, I'm going to give them those cards. And this, what is this here? Kelechi, thank you for who you are and all that you do. We created this to celebrate you and your love of pole. Yeah, it's me. As a brand founded by a black millennial woman. Um, I can't reach that. Tahira Benjamin. We know how hard it is to feel seen and loved as a black woman and hope our pieces can help, especially when sending your love to. Yes, I'm going to give these cards to my friends. I especially want to give them the one with me on the poll. Um, with love team unwritten. Um, I love this. So if you want to go onto their page, they are shop the unwritten on Instagram. That's shop the unwritten on Instagram and TikTok as well. And their website is shop unwritten.com. So shop unwritten.com. But look at this. Um, I'm saying look at this. Some of you lot who are listening to the audio will not be able to see this, but it's basically a notebook and it's me on a pole at the front of the notebook. Oh, I'm going to use that so much, especially when I go to like governmental things. I'll just bring out the notebook with me on a poll. I want somebody to say something, say something. OK, um, so thank you for those gifts. And then finally, Davina Hamilton, you know, we've had Davina on the show before. She's a picture book, uh, children's picture book um, writer, author. And um, the illustration this time is done by Elena Reynoso. And Riley's back again. Riley finds his beat. And Riley is playing the drums, child. Riley is playing the drums. Riley finds his beat. That is so beautiful. I can't wait to read this. Thank you, Davina. Riley was fed up. He tried for so long. But still, he kept getting the rhythm all wrong. His mummy assures him he'll master this feat. With practice and patience, he will find his beat. Oh, I love this. So, Lev will love this. But I I, I fear that if I show Lev this book, he'll now want a drum set. And Omar, ha, it's enough. Between taking him to gymnastics and swimming, <laughs> it is enough. Because he'll come back from gymnastics and be like, let me show you what I learned. No, the the flat is not big enough for that. That is called a hazard. No. So, God willing, God willing, big home soon come, you know? Anyway, like I said, when it's... Oh, sorry. And then I've got the Adinkra Oracle deck by Araba Ofori Aqua. You know, she came on the show before. So, um, I can't wait to get into using this oracle deck as well it comes with some um a beautiful cloth as well to place the cards on i love chunky cards oh i love a chunky card oh lots of girth sorry <laughs> sorry um i love this it's a beautiful deck beautifully colored divine creative power and is it written in is it tree um it looks beautiful ma'am Thank you, Araba. Can't wait to get into that. Got so many bits. But now, if I can finish my sentence that I keep starting, whenever it's my birthday, you know, like I like to give you something too. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do a pick a pile reading. Oh, the time is going, isn't it? I'm going to do a pick a pile reading, right? So, you know, I haven't done any, um, one of these for a while. Usually I'm reading one of the tarot letters, but 
as my gift to you, I'm going to share my powers of divination with you. And you get to practice yours as well. I keep scratching my nose. You get to practice yours as well. So all I need you to do is choose a number between four, five, or six. Four, five, or six. Yeah? Take your time. And when you're thinking about which number to pick between four, five, or six, I'd like you to think about what advice do I need as in what do you need? What advice do you need to see the rest of the year through in the most optimal way um, for you? So what advice do you need in order to get the most out of the rest of this year? Yeah. What advice do you need to get the most out of the rest of this year? Then you pick the number between number four, five or six. So with that said, let's get into it. Let me just clean my hands with some Florida water. Think about it. What advice do you need, right? To just get the most out of the rest of this year. Just patting my cards. So I'm going to pull for um, pile four first and then go to pile um five and then go to pile six so for those who have picked pile four what advice do they need to see out this year in the best way possible let's see what that is i'm going to get three oh there that's it i was going to say i was going to get three cards and the three cards came out themselves anyway and then we'll get a card from the dickhead in Reco uh, recovery affirmation card deck let's see what card we choose from here there and then we'll get one card from the wisdom of the oracle deck as well let's see i pray that the message is for your highest good okay let's see so path four. Oh, oh, god okay all right path four. the cards that come out we've got the emperor card in reverse and then we've got the sun card in reverse and then we've got the Ace of Swords in reverse. Um, so I'm reading this a number of ways. The first thing I'm picking up here for the um, with the Emperor card is that some of you are going to really need to uh, think about your control issues um, or the, your, your propensity to try to control situations that are essentially outside of your control. When I'm looking at the Emperor card here, and this is um, an Aries card, um, because it's stealing a lot of joy from you when I look at the sun card you're doing as much as you can especially some of you who want to be like the dutiful children especially in this case like the dutiful son you want to be the dutiful children you're 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 sacrificing your sense of joy because you want to prove yourself dutiful um to the people around you that you're always there i'm always there you i'm not always there when you call but i'm always on time you're always there when they call when they call and you're always on time like you don't really so that means that when you're in certain dynamics, you're not even present with the people that you're meant to be present with. So even when you're like, oh, I'm taking some time off, I'm just going to go and do my thing. You're not really doing that thing because mentally you're actually exhausted because you've given so much to everything else that's happening um, around you or in terms of your uh, whatever the thing is that you're trying to control. But what I'm picking up here is it's probably family. But for some of you, because of the way that the emperor is dressed, I'm also thinking about business as well. Oh, drag me. Um it's not allowing you to be present and it's not even allowing for new ideas to really flow through you. Ace of Swords in reverse the way that it should. You can't control everything. Control is an illusion. And, and the thing is, a lot of us know that to say it, but then we still don't really understand that it is actually just an illusion. And so you're going to have to choose. You're getting to the point at, um, if you want to see this uh, year out in the best way possible, you're essentially at a fork in the road where you're going to have to make a decision between yourself and everybody else. And that's not meaning that, um, and we're going to have a full, sorry, we're going to have an eclipse in Libra on the 14th of October. So I feel like that's also going to be a time, a pivotal time where the, your, the ways, the habits that you kind of, um, exhibit the habits that you perform will be made glaringly obvious to you because you're going to likely get into some kind of tiff with people that maybe you're trying to care about maybe you're trying to cultivate new dynamics with because of your lack of presence like what is it Khalil Gibran says that when it comes to friendships you know in in the prophet they say to the prophet 
um, in the book, they say, teach us about friendship. And one of the verses when the prophet is teaching about friendship is that he says, seek your friends with hours to live, not hours to kill right if you're meeting your friends or you're meeting up with people it might even be love interest whatever the case may be or the people that you want to hold very dear to you but you arrive and you're just like um burdened and tired then they're not really experiencing the best of you so then what's the point and so other things are falling to the wayside because you feel that you have to do things in a particular way and it doesn't have to be that way there's always scope and space for different the card we've got from the dickhead ah look at that not spirit never making a liar out of me the card from that you got from the dickhead in recovery affirmation deck says there is strength in letting go of what no longer serves the path that my soul is on <laughs> with the south node in libra for the next what 16 or so months you were gonna have to learn how to let go of things that we're just holding on to for the sake of oh well I've you know it's always been this way if it's not serving you like let it go and I feel that the more that you hold on radical external circumstances are going to come your way that's actually going to yank the things away from you to show you like like leave it the fuck alone and like live your life um because more time the people that we're worrying about <laughs> they've already lived a full life like they've lived their life and then like or they're even living their life because sometimes it's like siblings or even partners or children, um, parents, like whatever the case may be, or colleagues, you know, within work, like you're stressing out about these people. They're not stressing out about you. Like they're living their life and they're more importantly, they're living their life how they want to live their life. And sometimes we, through the way that we love people, we try to love them out of their own habits or the, out of their own path unconditional love is sometimes also accepting that people are on the path that they're on and you do not hold the power to change that and you should not try to change that because they need to see through um, specific lessons and you can't interrupt that so the fork in the road card from the wisdom in the um, of the oracle deck says for pile four Every choice has a consequence. You've arrived at a fork in the road and you are being asked to come to a decision. Will you further your dreams by choosing left or by choosing right? Will you take the road less travelled or the one well worn by others who have come before you? This is your choice and yours alone to make. Circumstances and other people will not make it for you. Be present and do not avoid this junction for it is an important crossroads. Take heart as no matter which path you choose, you will have a rich and meaningful experience. Exactly. Because no matter which way we really do this on the, in this thing called life you're still going to learn something I hope so anyway but you're still going to learn something but I'm saying like what is it that you can do so you can learn in the optimal way with um you know the path of least resistance basically so I pray that that resonates with you pile four that was your reading look at me being quick fire not you being quick girl pile five let's get into it what is the message for pile five what do they need to oh the flew out onto the floor pile five one more card oh that was easy pile five and then a card from the wisdom of the oracle deck sorry if i dragged you pile four i'm thinking about it now and it's like raw you really can't. i'm just telling you what i see in the cards that's all let's see what we've got for pile five oh to be fair it's giving libra it's giving libra to be fair they've got a scale and they're wearing this beautiful kind of ballet type of gown and then there's a there's an owl on top of their headdress um on the card that i'm looking at from the wisdom of the oracle deck all right so let's see what power five has for them power five the full card in reverse oh justice card. wow and the eight of wands upright so the full card in reverse eight of wands upright justice in reverse so the best way to for par five the best way to see through the rest of this year is to accept the new beginnings that are calling to you right um we've got the eight of wands here so messages coming through some of you it's about a legal case as well so i think that that will just wrap itself up but this is very much libra energy that's showing up in these in this particular card it's giving pisces it's giving libra par five like you can only hold off you can only stave off certain things for so long a new beginning is be, uh, a new beginning is calling to you some of you it's actual relocation but you're trying to hold off on doing it yet every message is saying to you come on come on let's go the time is now right and 
you need to because it will help you strike a balance in your life the likelihood is that it will help you strike a balance in your life and the ways that the way that things have been working is that there hasn't been much balance like yeah there hasn't been much balance is what I'm picking up from there oh look at this I demonstrate how deeply in love I am with myself by choosing rest that's the card from the dickhead and recovery um affirmation cards you have to and sometimes rest is maybe taking a vacation so some of you maybe it's not relocating but taking uh taking a vacation um I want to see what it says for to be fair because that's really dragging my eye because I feel like that's where your message mainly is it says here life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are nourishing yet over time they strike a balance you move from being from stasis to doing from discovering to loving to letting go to being again life is a pendulum swinging between all of these states you will always oscillate back and forth between doing and being if you are not content with where you are at this moment remember that all experiences have their place except um, accept them without judgment and you'll see how the universe adjusts in perfect balance you reap what you sow for every cause there is an effect wondrous things will be revealed now and that's the eight of wands wondrous things will be revealed now because whether you like it or not there are new beginnings waiting for you and it's gonna probably what it's gonna take for some of you is to break contractual ties oh, i get it it's gonna take because justice is about legal stuff as well so, and and it makes sense because like i said about the eclipse in um, libra happening on the 14th of october some of you are going to need to break contracts in other to in, or in order to do the things that you need to do or you're not going to renew contracts because you're like, nah, I'm I'm done. So for some people, it might be separation or divorce, or it might just be leaving a workplace or not renewing a lease. Some of you strongly, I feel like it's not renewing a lease because you can go now, like you can go wherever you want to go now and start again. It's never too late to start again. It is absolutely never too late to start again. Some of you are like, oh, but we bought a house together. We've done this. We've done that. How could I fam go, go. And I know that I'm saying that and it sounds really flippant or dismissive, but you can go like you don't have to be where you don't want to be like you can go. Right. And so if it's a workplace, you don't have to be there. I know that in a cosy lives, you're like, oh, I need to pay for things and da, 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 da. But you have to show life how willing you are to experience something different, because if you don't, then you're going to stay where you are. And that in and of itself is also a decision. So it's up to you so that was part five pray that that resonates with you let's go to pile six the final pile it's the final pile sorry sorry i just felt the need to sing that let's see what we've got for pile six. Oh, pile six money 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 must be funny in a rich man's world Oh, let's see. Pile five, I'm seeing some corns. Okay, one flew out for you straight away between worlds. Okay, so pile five, I'm sorry, pile six rather. Um, We've got the king of wands and then we've got the five of pentacles in reverse and we've got the seven of cups in reverse. All right, nice. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that you're actually stepping into a moment in your life of action and power. You feel it because I feel like it's probably been happening all year, building up to this point where you, you're not as broke as you felt like you were before. Um, like things are changing for you, yet you're still required to let go of feelings of lack. Because if inherently within yourself, you feel like, oh, you're not good enough, then you're going to keep striving for things on the outside that will keep affirming to you that you're not good enough in the sense that like you can get all the promotions in the world. You can get all the, um, you know, pay rises in the world. You can get all the big contracts in the world. You can be with the most attractive person if that's your bag in the world. You can have all of those things and still feel like a lack of contentment because ultimately you don't feel like you're deserving of the things because you don't feel like you're good enough. And so you're going to have to leave that behind because what is actually showing up in reality is that you are a baddie whichever whatever gender you are like you're a bad man right like you have so much power you have so much um drive you have so much going for you in terms of talent and everything 
you need to see yourself more clearly because then it will also help you to prioritize the things that you want to go for. Because while you're still doubting that you're worth anything, you'll chase things that aren't even for you because you're trying to prove to yourself that you can get it. But why are you trying to get something that's not even for you in the first place? Right. It's a waste of it's a waste of life force. But if you are more content and you know who you are and you're sure of yourself deep down, then the things that are for you will be way more clear. And then you're not wasting energy chasing things that you you don't that won't bring you any fulfillment anyway. And it's not part of like essentially it's not part of your blessing. So then a card you've got from the wisdom of the Oracle deck is between worlds. And we see this. Um, is this an ostrich who's between worlds or is it a flamingo? I think it's a flamingo. It's a flamingo between worlds. Um, so part of it is grey and then the other start as part is like bright green. It says here, between the worlds is where you must let go of the tendency to make assumptions. This is a time when you are unable to see what is ahead. Cultivate curiosity and trust the process of change and growth. You are done learning the lessons of recent experiences. In this place, between what was and what will be, is a state of making and unmaking and making again. What is essential now is to admit not knowing. There is a great freedom and power to be unleashed. A mystery is not um, a mystery that is not yours to understand weaves the web of life within a divine matrix of consciousness greater than your own thoughts, feelings, beliefs, desires and decisions. The seeds that were planted in the past begin to take root, but what surfaces will probably not be what you expect. When you are between the worlds, you are invited to see with the curious eyes of a child glimpsing a rainbow for the first time. Do so and you will not be disappointed. Yeah, you're going from like the, almost like this ugly duckling energy into showing up in a really, really big way, I think, in the world and in the lives of those around you and probably in your career as well. But you have to believe that you're deserving of being there. Otherwise, nothing will ever be enough. And the card that we've got from the Dickhead and Recovery Affirmation card deck says, it is from my overflow of pengness that I'm able to pour into the lives of those around me. You've got to believe that you're peng. You can't have one droplet of pengness. You have to have an overflow of pengness. The peng this runneth over my g you've got to believe in that otherwise what are you doing what are you doing so i pray that that resonates with you that was weird that was really quick quick fire well done collect chair pray that that resonates with you with the card and i'm helping you to train your intuition you know going off the card or going off the letter that we got last week switching cameras going off the letter that we got last week that was my way of helping you train your intuition then that way you're able to as your intuition gets stronger you'll be able to always find the messages that are for you um because you'll know you'll be able to your body knows you just have to pay attention to what your body's doing when it's trying to lead you to the answer that you need the other day literally i was driving in near old kent road and I thought of somebody, not even somebody that's my brethren, not even somebody that I know like that in any way. We're just in the industry together and they just crossed my mind. Trust and believe their car drove right past me while I was waiting at the junction to turn. They drove right past me. I thought, yo, spirit is spiriting. Spirit is spiriting. Anyway, I feel like I've said enough. So hope you enjoyed that pick a pile reading i'm now going to big up this week's show sponsors who are express vpn be right back thank you to express vpn for sponsoring this week's episode i'm about to read <laughs> i'm about to read about express vpn and why you should use them but this might be triggering for some people especially with the conversation about excel bullies so i'm so sorry um, but anyway using the internet without express vpn is like walking your dog in public um, in public without securing them on a leash most of the time you'll probably be fine but what if what if one day your dog runs away or gets got dog napped i was going to say god napped but dog napped it's better to be careful especially when it's as simple as using express vpn not express vpn on your dog a leash on your dog but express vpn on your devices you see it cool every time you can uh, connect to the internet or connect to um, an unencrypt unencrypted network in cafes hotels air airports the strip club them things your online data is not secured any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data but express vpn creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so they can't 
It will take a hacker about with a super computer uh, over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. ExpressVPN works on all of your devices. So that's your phone, your laptop, your tablet, even on your smart TV. I wonder if they've got like vibrators that have like Wi-Fi connection, because I wonder if like ExpressVPN would also work with your Wi-Fi um, capable vibrator. This is something that we must look into and please let me know because I there must be a Wi-Fi vibrator out there somewhere. Anyway, it's easy to use. Just fire up the app and click one button and get protected. So you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free at expressvpn.com slash straws. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash straws. Go and get your extra three months for free when you join expressvpn.com slash straws. Okay, now let's get to Share Your Magnificence. Okay, so for Share Your Magnificence, I love when I ask for things and you lot do not play like you're on this thing immediately. So I'm sure some of you are still going to send me my birthday read mixes i'll be waiting on those okay we'll be waiting on those but um in the meantime portia our baby girl already sent a remix through it goes like this hi kalechi as requested i'm sending you a remix to a song for your birthday this was written just now by chris and i and it's to the tune of i have nothing by whitney houston oh god my vocals i haven't lubricated my throat <laughs> let's see um it's an honor to do this the night before my birthday though it's technically already my birthday everywhere but la lol enjoy happy birthday portia libra gang mm. <laughs> all right let's go let's see if i can do this <clears throat> all right Ma, 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 ma. Let's go. All right, hold on. Wash your legs and wash your chicken too. Open up your drawers, add some seasoning to cream your foot. The dryness is making me cry. Flakes cling to your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you let your skin care die? I don't really want to smell your stench in rush hour. I don't really want to see your thin lips, they're sour. I don't really want to hear your white woman cries. I can't leave quick enough. I'm tired of your lies. Don't make me throw one more straw. I don't want to teach anymore. Season your food if you dare. Please just fucking wash your hair cause you're a pussy clot basic hygiene 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 is all i ask <laughs> I couldn't find it in my voice. I could not because I was laughing. <laughs> Sorry to your eardrums because Whitney was taking a fucking piss when she was making them notes, adding them notes up in there. Woo. Thank you, Portia. Two slaps on yours and Chris's chest. I love that rendition. Maybe you lot should write the songs from now on because you lot have bars, right? That was the perfect birthday present thank you so so much i loved that so now i'm excited after that to get into the interview for this week where i'm talking to the amazing francesca ramsey she has she is an internet og like she is a baby girl i used to love like her mtv segments when they would come up like and i loved her in superstore as well oh 
Francesca is a babe and it's great to be speaking with her. So I spoke to her a few weeks ago while the writer's strike was still on. So at the point that we're speaking, you know, Francesca, as well as so many other people in America are still dealing with the writer's strike. And so um, even though the writer's strike, it seems like that's now done. SAG Afra, they're still going. So the actors, the crew, that like, all of that stuff is still going. That their strike is still ongoing. But in terms of the writers' strike, I believe that that's done. Um, or the people who are with WGA. So like that's done. Anyway, a bit about Francesca. She is an um, Francesca Ramsey. She's an actor, writer, and commentator. And we basically talk about the fact that the Hollywood strikes, the writer strikes, all of the strikes have just been going at this point for, um, and they've lasted beyond a hundred days. And I think that this strike would then have been the longest. Amazing. So she, like I said, she's been in Superstore. Um, uh, you would know her online as Cheska Lee and she makes like short form videos, kind of like what I do, but American. And she's been doing it for much longer. So she's just amazing one of her most viral videos was um shit white girls um shit white girls say to black girls and she had one kind of blonde dusty wig that she used and it was just hilarious I think she's great and she's got a podcast a new podcast out called let me fix it and that premiered I think September 13th so it's definitely out for you to get into now but anyway I will jump to the interview now our chat so you can enjoy that we even talk about tarot I bring her in on a tarot vibe um yeah enjoy Francesca <laughs> you're wow, such a baby a girl intro. <laughs> am I oh thank you you're such a baby girl like you uh, are oh. that girl if there is if there oh. is that girl when it comes to breaking down you know mm. societal conversations for the people on the internet them you're that girl. Nobody can tell me anything. You're that girl. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I mean, that's <laughs> high praise coming from you. I'm just such a long time fan of your work. I can't believe it's taken us this long to like actually, I, I, it's not in real life, but it feels like, like we're yeah. off the internet, but yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of surreal. It is. And I'm just like, no, I really love it. I've, I just, you know, the respect for what you do, what you've done, mm. what you continue to do. I, you really set pace like you you know i remember on mtv seeing your videos and um shit white girls say to black girls yeah like yeah. <laughs> you're when we talk about seasoned professionales also known as seasoned wow. professionals that's you <laughs> thank you that means so much i mean truly the feeling is so mutual um it's always so delightful to see how you've been able to dabble in all these different art forms i see you popping up my instagram reels all the time <laughs> and going viral on twitter all the time and like writing all these books i mean it's just it's really inspiring and i I, I feel honored to be in such esteemed company. You know, it's like, well, it's pip pip. <laughs> <And> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I could say the same for you. When you showed up on Superstore, I, w mm. I lost it because I was oh. just like, this is absolutely perfect. You've gone from doing this to doing this and doing this. Like, we, even with the, you know, writing books and all of like. It's, it's truly fantastic to be in the presence of somebody. Like, we're just going back and forth gassing each other up. But it's just like, <laughs> it's truly fantastic to just see all of the things that you've done so far. But outside of the achievements, honestly, I just think that you are just such a great person we throw around the word authentic but there is such an authenticity to you where you've always been about what you've said you've been about from day dot and you've kind of stuck to that and I feel like our lives run parallel to each other so there's something I'm going to talk about later but even in terms of sometimes even the backlash that we get online you know, why are you talking mm. about racism when your partner and yeah. Cha, 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 cha. and yeah, yeah. I remember having to kind of look at you and being like, how are you dealing with this? Because this is really pissing me off. Like, what? Yeah. I mean, look, we're human. And I think one thing that I've had to get better about over time, and I'm curious if you've had this experience too, is I don't share everything. I think I've gotten Amen. really good at giving the appearance that I'm really accessible and that mm -hmm. you always know what's going on. But I also have to turn the phone off, turn the computer off and process away from the internet mm -hmm. because I can't always do it in real time. And I'm so thankful that I have a community to do that yeah. because as you know, I would be out here cursing out 
people left and right and I still need to keep a job <laughs> so yeah. like I'm like yeah. let me you know what you're not gonna disrupt my peace let me do this offline yeah and then come back with a you know a cute professional read if need be yeah and then keep it moving I love that. I've got to protect my peace and protect my pee. Okay, so mm -hmm, won't be arguing mm -hmm. with you. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm getting better at. I've always been, and it's like we're edging there. I've always been a very private person, almost neurotically private. So, and again, it speaks to your authenticity because I say on a podcast all the time that I give the appearance that I share a lot, but I'm probably talking about like five percent of my life if that yeah. you know everything yeah, else is off it, it just it cannot be for the masses because otherwise what do we what's the point of us living then if we don't yeah. have anything we keep for ourselves and it's also a double-edged sword because once you open that door you can't close it and that's Thing that I learned over the course of my career, which is why I've shifted how much I share and what I share. Mm. But to your point about you need to keep things for yourself, once you let people in, they feel entitled to more, but then they also feel entitled to speak on what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you know, you shouldn't be spending your money in this way. You yeah. know, you should be making these kind of career moves. It's like, mm, I'm not asking for advice. Yes. I'm not asking for, and you know, I, again, I try to choose my words carefully, but I mm. often find myself internally thinking, I, why would I take advice from somebody who's not doing what I want to do? I don't know you. Well, what Simple. what have you done? <laughs> so Simple. like, don't you're not going to tell me how to run my business. I managed to keep my lights on without advice from you. But, so yeah, like, I'm, I'm good. Along, that was good. Yeah, before <laughs> you came along, I was absolutely fine. Like, you keep that advice and you go and do something with it. Um, right. But yeah, it is, it, it is that. It is that of kind of like, I don't, really want all eyes on it i don't want opinions on it which is also why i don't even share anything really about my son images anything like that because oh, the yeah. moment i see something like oh you bought that nappy you should have used this like i will ask for your location no. like drop your like, <laughs> like, we'll have to like i don't want to hear yeah. any sort of advice none you know oh absolutely and i think about that all the time like i'm an adult i've been on the internet for a long time but even i sometimes feel insecure or self-conscious or my feelings get hurt because some stranger says something and mm -hmm. i can't imagine having a kid and subjecting them to that and exactly. having strangers say things like i would i see red on behalf of other people's kids so mm -hmm. i can't imagine putting my own child out there in that way and, and having people say negative things you're you're doing the right thing by yeah. by keeping that locked down yeah i just think and for you know i think about digital footprints photos how everybody's sharing pictures of like all of these young little babies these people young people sharing them Ooh. years to come what are you doing and we, we keep having this conversation about ai which we're going to talk about regarding yes. the writer's strike we're talking about all of these things like you're giving it information we're talking about a surveillance state or you know many you know highly surveilled um states of existence and you're offering information that this person has not consented to having out there so yeah it it's me. it's it's it is really scary and i'm so glad that you used the word consent because i think that's something a lot of parents are and, and and not even just parents right like you see people filming somebody on the bus did something weird so now i'm gonna film them they did yeah. not give you permission to do that your child in the middle of having a breakdown is not consenting to you sharing a video of them crying yeah. on the internet um and children deserve autonomy yes. they sh they are if, if they don't want to hug you know a stranger if they don't want to kiss on the cheek they should be able to say no yeah. they should also they don't know because they're children uh be able to have a level of privacy and when they become older they can say okay you know what i think i feel comfortable sharing that yeah. but right now let them be kids and let them yeah. be silly and let them make mistakes and let them learn lessons in the privacy of your own home without yeah. strangers weighing in i think so because when i started seeing that trend of like cracking a, an egg on your child's <gasps> head i said no nah, you have all lost it i don't know no. what is good now we've crossed somewhere and i don't know what we what we're doing anymore i mean sadly that's not new i i remember i think it was jimmy kimmel every christmas would do a prank where he would ask parents to tell the kids that they had given away all of their presents and film it and then send them in and it's just you know a montage of kids crying and it's just so mean-spirited that's the part that i don't get about it i i yeah. think you shouldn't share too much of your kids anyway but to uh trick a child yeah. it just i don't i don't get the joke 
It feels but, a bit humiliating yeah. as well. That's my thing about it all. It just felt like, why would you come and humiliate your child in front of strangers? And then God forbid, now people remember that face. And then they, so if somebody, because you've done that to your child on camera, somebody walks past them in the street, they have an egg and they crack it on their forehead. What are you going to say then? Like, because you've, yeah. you essentially, by doing that, you're creating a culture of consent for other people to treat your child the same way. Because that is that yeah. door that you talked about. Once you open it, people are going to walk yeah. around. It's like, your yeah. life is this house or this mansion. You open the door you say oh you can just have a look in the kitchen they're gonna go upstairs so yeah you, you have to just be aware i i really think it's already starting to happen because some of the kids who grew up on youtube you know in the early days of youtube are now entering their uh 1820s and we're seeing some of those kids come forward and say my life was miserable my mom was a mommy blogger and shared all the stuff about me and i think we're gonna see more of that as time goes on and you know to your point about AI, unfortunately, legislation seems to always be behind technology. Yes. I think in Iowa, they just passed something about the financial aspect of uh, blogging for kids, where if the kid is 16 and under, there has to be a trust for the financials, Beautiful. which is positive. But yeah. to me, I'm like, it's kind of, it's one state. The bar is very low. Yeah. I think we still need more. Um the same way that we have protections for child actors. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I always bring up to people is even with the protections with child actors, mm -hmm. we know that child actors end up getting fucked up. Yes, A lot yeah. of people come forward and they're like, I, I had, I was in questionable situations. Yes. I was exposed to things too early. Mm -hmm. My parents stole my money. I had no childhood. And those are, children that have the protections of a union yes. and the Coogan laws to protect their finances. So what's going to happen to these influencer kids that don't have any of those protections? I mean, and then it doesn't, the doesn't look good. No, and then you've got the familial bonds of that as well. Like, oh, but I'm your mom, but I'm your dad, but I'm your, you know, so, the, you know, I, this is why this is happening. And they say on average, well, right now, when we're looking at different types of legislation, that um, legislation is actually around 12 years behind technology like oh, on, yeah. like about 12 it. years so when you say that about the um the the children and youtube and things like that that would make sense 12 years ago mm -hmm. you're only catching up now when we've already moved on oh, to something yeah. else yeah i don't know if you watched the congressional hearings when they were talking about potentially banning tiktok it was maddening the congressmen are like so does tiktok access your wi-fi huh, huh, huh? And the tiktok ceo was like yes everything they're like okay 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 so 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 the phone is on the wi-fi like what are y'all yes what the fuck and then they're like does tiktok track your face well, when you're using a filter, oh, it does. So it's watching what you do. Like, sir, <laughs> like, every app is watching what you do. Like, what the hell? It was like your fave was... is called Facebook. What, oh what my... face is it looking at? What face it is it looking? It was booking? maddening. It was maddening watching it because yeah. you could see you could see the president of TikTok. It was that moment like where you're in, you know, a sitcom and you look at the camera and you're like, is this for, is for real? Yeah. You, <laughs> Am I is this fine? real right yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. It's wild. It brings us nicely to what I wanted for us to talk about because I've spoken with John Terry and that was before 100 days of, of the strike, the writer's strike yeah. and the actor's strike and everything. And now we've gone beyond this yes. feels like we're officially the longest strike yes. in history officially. Yeah. If this is uncharted territory. Yeah, it's it's pretty mind boggling. And I will say this is my first time going through a strike uh, in 2007 was the last writer's strike. And yes. I was in acting school. I think I just I think I just graduated from college. Um, so it has been a very surreal experience. I've learned so much. I've met so many incredible people. And throughout the entire thing, what's been really beautiful is the solidarity, the resolve, um, just people uplifting each other and yeah. the the prevailing feeling that we're doing this because it's the right thing to do, but also we're doing it because we're going to win. This is not going to last forever. It, it will end. And when it ends, the industry will be better for it. Are there some, I, I can imagine there are some people who are fretting though, the, the writers, um, the actors that haven't quite made a, um, a lot of money, which is a lot of writers and actors, right? right. And yeah. they're like, what am I going to do? do because this is going on for a while yeah i mean thankfully again this was one of the things that was really eye-opening for me as being a member of the union is 
strikes don't happen overnight. Like Mm. these were things that we knew were potentially coming down the pipeline. Our negotiations happen every three years. And so ideally we would have had these negotiations in 2020, but the the pandemic, you know, we didn't really have any leverage because everything was shut down at that time. So uh, our unions have an incredible strike fund. Mm -hmm. Um, You might have seen via SAG, because I'm in WGA and SAG, Mm -hmm. there were a number of high profile actors donating millions. Uh, The Rock donated a million dollars, I believe. Um, Meryl Streep. I mean, so many of the more uh, successful, quote unquote, actors Mm -hmm. and writers have contributed. And that's the purpose of collecting bargaining is yes. for you know the, the those of us that are in positions of power to help those of us that are not and while this is definitely a difficult time mm. uh, the community has really stepped up there's the entertainment fund a number of restaurants are offering discounts grocery mm. stores have been covering free groceries oh. um, there are uh, vets that are offering free surgeries and free you know flea oh. and tick medication for your dog um, if you go on the website there are so many resources available mm. and it's been really incredible even um, when I'm wearing my shirt I went to go pick up I bought a bullhorn so that I didn't lose my voice on the picket lines. I went to Best Buy. I was wearing my strike t-shirt and this little elderly couple started talking to me because of my shirt and they paid for my batteries. They were like, you know what? We're going to take care of you. We stand with you. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. And even just in my neighborhood, if I'm wearing my shirt, people stop and talk to me. And it's just been really incredible. And I also believe that this is kind of elevating class consciousness amongst people who are not unionized that are like wait a second Mm. unions are good everything i've been told is a lie (laughs) (laughs) we need to all be working together like screw the man um so i that that's really been heartening to to experience and see i love that um it, yeah, because it, it just, it truly, truly matters. And to know that there's the, the solidarity in that way and no one's really trying to abscond from what we've, what's what been planned or cross the picket line, all of that stuff, it's so, so important. Because when I was looking at the salaries of these um, executives, these, you know, CEOs oh, yeah. of all of these uh, brands, I was just like, you're getting how many millions a year? And not writing one word, not being on set, not getting to set at 5 a.m. for your call time. I mean, these are people who have multiple homes and, wow. mul- you know, million dollar yachts and things like that. And some of our members are not able to, you know, pay bills. We have 160,000 members of SAG and 86% of them cannot qualify for their health insurance. Wow. The health insurance requirement is 26 grand a year. Wow. There are a number of actors who are not able to do that. We're not asking for everybody to be millionaires. We're asking for fair wages and we're asking for a piece of the pie yes. that we contribute to. And especially as writers, you know, people are using elements of their life, their trauma, you know, their joys, their intimate private moments, relationships with their family members, and they're putting it on the page and creating stories that people love and enjoy and create memes from and, you know, Mm. buy merch with little sayings and stuff. Mm. And the studios are like, no, no, I need two houses though. (laughs) I I I need need $341 million (laughs) a year. I need $341 to live. And that's me taking a pay cut, but I need that. Bonkers. Bonkers. Wow. I looked yeah. at the, um, the 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 wages or their, their what they pay themselves their salaries and, and you know with the dividends and their bonuses and all of that and I just thought yeah you're actually you're actually just ridiculous so if you just gave a, a small percentage of that spread that across with actors you wouldn't even feel it really like oh no like they wouldn't no, really I, feel I, it not at all I'm not sure what the exact percentage is for SAG but for WGA we're only asking for two percent of the profits. Uh, to be distributed amongst our membership. Wow. Um, So again, I am so thankful that our leadership is so transparent with us. Every step of the way, they're sharing how negotiations are going and, 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 and they actually did like a survey amongst the membership to kind of determine what some of our demands were. Um, and that has been really interesting, realizing how often the experiences that I've been having in the writer's room or in development mm. are experiences that lots of us are having. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it, this can be such a solitary uh, profession as a writer 
And then, you know, you work on a project and it doesn't go or you don't get a job and you think like, is it me? Is something wrong with me? Mm -hmm. And then you meet someone else that goes, oh no, girl, that's me too. I've been in development for three years, not getting paid. Or I closed a project and I didn't get paid for 10 months. You know, like I'm in rewrite after rewrite waiting to get paid. Um, Unfortunately, the studios have found loopholes to uh, prevent them from paying us fairly. And that's the purpose of a negotiation of a contract is to ratify certain elements so that we are treated fairly and compensated well. Amen. Because that's what they'll be like, oh, well, it's just the way that the industry is. Okay, so then we need to change the industry. So we change it. Because how is it that I'm right? That's the one that always... (laughs) I'm the one that's writing and then you're telling me it's the way of the industry that I shouldn't get paid. Is everybody mad? Get me my money immediately. (laughs) That's when I have to, I have had many of those conversations on the internet and that's when I have to log all the way off. Well, that's what it is. Sir, we have a contract. That's the purpose of a contract is to both have parties agree to something and then sign the contract. The contract was up uh, the end of May or the beginning of May. So now we're on strike. This was yeah. not, you know, this didn't come out of nowhere. We knew that this was potentially going yeah. to happen. And I remind myself and others, every single time we've made advances in our contract, we've had to freaking put our foot down to get yes. it. Whether it was our health care, whether it was residuals for VHS. Imagine. They were like, oh, no, 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 VHS, you don't, you don't need no residuals for that. And we don't know uh, how it's yes, going to we do. go. We don't know. We don't know how... Listen, Mm. and they did the same thing in 2007. The internet was still very new. And we said, well, if you're going to put our content, you know, YouTube was founded in 2005. Yes. So we said, well, if our if our content is on the internet, we should be paid. And the studios were like, no, 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 that's okay. Don't you have to worry about that. And so we had to go on strike for it. And so now I remind people, here we are in 2023, and we're saying, hey, we're concerned about AI. We want to make sure that there are protections that don't have you using our likeness in perpetuity, that don't let you train AI to write a script off of our work and then we don't get paid for it. Um, Let's make sure we can figure that out. And the studio said, oh, no, 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 don't worry about that. (laughs) Y'all are, well, no, it's okay. Don't worry about that. You're concerning yourself with something. So, you know, I... I, this is not a fun situation. No one wants yes. to be on strike. We, we would all like to go back to work. But the reality is you don't get, you know, fair treatment by asking nicely. True. Hey, I would love some, I would love some rights, please. Yeah, Just a little like, bit. Shut up no. and take what <laughs> no. you got. No, you got to say, we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to stand down. You're going to see that our work is valuable. Yeah. Good luck making a show without us. Try yeah. it. And they're struggling. And when people start complaining, the audience, the viewers start being like, Where where's mm-hmm. my things? Where are my things? They they know, like they've they've only got so much longer that they can do this. And I know that those are higher ups, they're really, really shaking. But we know that you're that girl when it comes to, like <laughs> I said, all of the things that you do. And I know that you've got a podcast coming soon. Yes, I'm so excited. My best friend Delon and I have a podcast premiering September 13th called yes. Let Me Fix It. Ooh. And Delon and I are both actors. We met in acting school, but we're multi hyphenates. You know, mm-hmm. he's also a writer. He's been on Broadway. He's done national tours. He's also a photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, he also helps coach students for acting school. And so the premise of our show is that we are looking at things from the past and we're saying, we can fix them. We can make you better. <laughs> We're giving you Olivia Pope without the murder, without the politics, (laughs) without the dead bodies. Uh, And so it's been so fun. We're looking at brands, celebrities, one hit wonders, books. I mean, we are just really looking at things that we love and saying, we believe that this could work in the Mm. future or or in today's current climate. And uh, it's been really, really fun. And I'm I'm just so excited to share it with people, especially because the crux of the podcast is our friendship. And and really just having a a proactive, positive spin. We're not just talking shit to talk shit. We're like, we're trying to be about it. I love that. Do you talk about dream? Do you remember them? Oh my God, he, he loves me. me. He, he loves, loves me now. Yeah, you're okay. panels uh, off a flame. We're trying to get your way up. Keep uh, listen, <laughs> we absolutely need a dream episode because See? here's the thing. Here's the thing. P Diddy 
is toxic. Do not add, if you want to be successful, ah. stay away from him. And, li- and listen, he's a, he's talented. Yes. You know, he obviously has an eye for talent, but whether it's making the band yeah. or Dream or, um, oh my God, wait, um, what's Danny TK. What? Danny K. Yes, he Aubrey know. O'Day. He, he's a professional he enemy of process and progress. He's a professional enemy of progress. He <laughs> really, really is. It's just, it's P. Diddy first and foremost. Yes. That is who he is Diddy most Lovell, invested P. Lovell, in. Diddy Love or whatever he's called himself now. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. my God. Dream would be a great, because those girls could really sing. They were giving. They, had, they really were. And they could dance. Yes. And And you know what? I also, not to give out cookies, the bar is in hell, but <laughs> we love some white girls who stay white. They weren't trying to be anything when but white. Dum, dum. You're putting pen on something flam. We're trying to get you. I said, yes, come with the cargo pants. They had a yes, cute cargo pants situation. Their hair was everyone, like a, a very, per, like a bright mm-hmm. color. No braids. Yes. No AAVE. Yes. Everyone was wearing their natural skin tone. Yes. I mean, <laughs> they were just staying in their lane. Just trying to do the thing, which I love for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Aubrey O'Day has changed ethnicities many a Five time. Times. You know. <laughs> i don't know what face she's on love that for you but who who are you the different girl than we we first started with dream would be a great one to talk about Please do that they, honestly the nostalgia moment of right now they are really they should be capitalizing on that they, they are perfect we to, for it we're wearing yeah, the we're wearing the we're wearing the cargo pants. We've got the little tops. Like is it Y two K fashion? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. We've got the little tops now. Everybody's getting a little shaggy. Cut. Some people are even getting mullets now. They're bringing all that. Like this is the perfect yeah. time to get Dream back. Like you can fix that. It's true. It's true. If they're listening, the girls from Dream, I don't even know their names. <laughs> like that's how bad it was their for business y'all. So much they minded their business, or Diddy minded their business so much that we don't even yeah. know their names. We don't. I don't know one name of any of the girls in that group. But they, they had a bop. Mm. Yes, yes. That song is my jam. When it comes, up, I've got like a nineties, noughties playlist on, um, mm-hmm. and um, online. And when I'm, oh, when that song drops, I said yes. You know, those were some white girls that gave me something that I could really do something with. Yes. There were a lot of girls from that era that we never heard from again. Another one was, I think her name is Samantha Mum- Mumba. Do you she was from her? my side. She's, she yeah, she was, was a British girl. Yeah. She oh, had I think she was one, Irish. Yeah, she's Irish girl. Yeah. She had one song. All of those are the people that I'm excited to go research. And like, yes. let me just slide in their DMs and see if they'll come on the podcast. Like, I know you ain't working, girl. What you doing on a Wednesday? <laughs> Come be on the pod. I wonder what Samantha Mumbo's doing because she could wear a cute mini denim skirt. One of the videos it was a little, because Mandy Moore she was, was of that era. Yes, Mandy mm-hmm. Moore was of that era. But then she gave us "This Is Us." You know, she moved on and she kind of did something. Yes, I feel like yes. Samantha Mumbo went on to do something over here. I just can't remember what. I mean, that's. that's I mean, truly. So now you're getting an essence of the pod because this is what just happened. <laughs> We were just reminiscing. We were like, what happened to so-and-so? You know what they should be doing? She should be a plus-size model. Yes. Why didn't she do a thing with, you know, yes. Lane Bryant? Why did she do, you know, we just started like giving all this free game. We're like, this is a podcast. I love so that. we're really excited. See, so everybody listening, you have to get involved. Let me fix it. 13th of September, you have to get involved because we already gave you a little sprinkle. So oh, make sure yes. you're ready. And you know what? I'm just going to claim it. You have to come be a guest i feel like you have what it takes <laughs> you can be out here teaching the girls you need to have a book you need to be making content on social media you need I'm to ready. have a podcast you know you are like i would take your advice i think a lot okay. of people clearly you have an audience that wants to hear what you have to say we got to get you together so you can help us fix dreams career i oh, i please let me be on that episode whenever you do that yeah. episode let me come through because i'll be like i am your probably the one fan that remembers you in britain that's not true i'm sure that there are other people <laughs> no 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 they have there's a listen you gonna get some angry emails they have fans i know they no, do they have fans in britain because or like a lot of my girlfriends they remember too whenever i sing it they're like oh my god what happened to them like so mm-hmm. yeah the Okay, wait, another, them, I want to come. An, another group that I just thought of because of you, I think they were British. Do you remember Cleopatra? Cleopatra, coming at you. Coming at you. 
Cleopatra. What happened to them? They're about the QEs. They're doing different things now. And their mum used to do their braids and they had a TV show as well. They had a t- I did they know had they had a TV, TV show, show as well. Yeah, and I swear they had magic powers on the TV show. I can't remember. Maybe I'm giving them extra, but they had a TV show as well as singing. And their mum used to do their beautiful braids back in the day. Like the oh, Cleopatra I girls were them. everything. They were everything. So yeah. Oh, we'll see. I it- feel like they disappeared from the US consciousness. I just remember like so often I'm surprised when a musician has a British accent, but you could hear their accent in their, yes. in their singing. Yeah. They were like, Cleopatra, come and at you. <laughs> yeah, you really opened your mouth for that one. Like, yeah, as a, Cleo- yeah, at Cleo- you, Cleo- could, you, could, you could hear the accent in the singing. <laughs> I love that because usually we're taught, because I studied musical theatre, you're taught to Americanize, get that twang with the moment mm. you start singing. It's just like a pop thing also that we do, isn't it? So it's I true. love that. Most they, people. Yeah. But Amy Winehouse, mm-hmm. she didn't. Amy Winehouse was very no. much. But Adele does. Oh, oh yeah. So I, sometimes I hear it. But I. When the right <laughs> it's like a little, it's a little bit in there. <laughs> it's a little twang. It's a little twang. It's, like a little, it's a little bit. It's in there. But then she starts talking between. She she sings these beautiful ballads, and then she's like, yeah, like she it comes she out. She's talking she starts girl. Talking. Yeah, she starts talking, mm-hmm. and she's London as London gets. So it's like, yes, Adele, I I love that. Yes. Craig David. I met this girl on Monday, Ooh. took her for a drink. But you don't and really you know, need to fix him because he's got a successful career. He's doing lots of songs. I was about to yeah. say, he's yeah. he. I feel like he recently had a resurgence as kind of doing like... Um, like you're like a uh, dancey type of stuff yeah, right yeah, like i've yeah. i've heard of you. oh man that is a handsome a handsome he's so man. handsome it was 20 and years you know of what? his first album coming out the other day i think it was 20 years ago. wow 20 years ago. and you know what let that be a lesson to the men out there when you mind your business and you stay in your lane Oof. you can you too can keep that hairline you too <laughs> You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know. <laughs> Don't Greg vote David conservative is... and you will be fine. Don't vote You'll Republican, be okay. you will be all right. Mm-hmm. Don't and be Craig a David, I know you're member. listening. You'll be all right. Craig, don't don't embarrass don't do me, Craig David. Don't Stay do in your lane. Stay cute. He minds his Keep business. Keep it cute. Yeah, he seems mm-hmm. to mind his business. He just does his thing over there. And I think he made quite a um a home for himself in America and just left Britain too. I think it's Britain that ages you and wears you down. So oh. I'm glad that he's just like minding his business, doing his own thing. That is a theory that I had not heard, but that that does make sense. <laughs> that tracks for me. <laughs> But in closing, <laughs> you mentioned something in your stories the other day. No, on your page, and you were asking mm. about the people who identify as um, identify as woo woo. And you're yes. like, is this is this how you've always been, or is this something? I think you phrased it like, is this how you've always been, or is this something recent? Mm-hmm. So why? Yeah, why because did it pick your interest. Okay, so what's so funny is I have always, I self-identified as a practical bitch. Yes. I love facts and figures. I love my calendar. And that's not to say you can't be that and woo, mm-hmm. but I've always kind of had like a block around spirituality. Yes. Like I, like my friends that'll be like, oh, you know, it's the strawberry moon. I'm like, girl, whatever. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's always story. a moon. <laughs> There's always a moon, you know, like it's just always something. And to me, I just always kind of rolled my eyes at it. And now I've been in L.A. for three years and slowly but surely just I just keep having these like weird coincidences where I will be talking about someone and then they'll text me Mm. or I will, you know, I, I was. I was leaving the parking garage and the woman that was doing my parking was beautiful. And I said, mm. oh, you're so pretty. You look like you could be a queen, like you should have a crown. And she said, my name is Raina Crown. Oh. And I was like, whoa, that's so weird. So like little strange coincidences keep happening. And I said, I asked the question because I, I'm turning I'm turning 40. Beautiful. And I wondered if it's like, my awakening is happening as I'm getting older yes. and that I'm like settling into myself in a way that's, that's making my vision more receptive to certain things. Yes. And I did get from a lot of people, they said that that happens, that some people are born intuitive and that sometimes it's like a dynamic life change. Mm-hmm. And who knows, it could be partially like the strike and mm-hmm. in this moment of uncertainty. And uh, because I'm kind of like 
reassessing what I want in life and, mm-hmm. and where I'm going and I'm being kind of reflective about getting older, that my brain is kind of more open to yeah. things beyond my my immediate consciousness. And it's it's kind of disorienting. It's it's, it's a little weird. Yeah, it's it's but it's good because it's um you um you know, we just from the teeny bits caught online over the years, it would track because there would usually be a sort of a woof, like where, and then yeah. you cut your hair. There was the, there's the woof, then yeah. you cut your hair, and then there's this rebirth. So basically, you've gone through. I what I would say is a almost like a plutonic or a scorpionic um, rebirth, where before yeah. that happens, though, you've got to die. You know, like there's something that has to happen, and yeah. that really just gets stripped back taken back taken a lot away, a lot and of people have said you. that yeah yeah but sometimes it's like you know someone passes away mm-hmm. close to you and to your point about the, uh, about dying it's kind of like you have this cosmic moment in your life that alters everything yes. and when you come on when you come out on the other side your mind is just different and i i do think that that has happened to me and uh, I would, you know, it was also really beautiful when I shared it. I got so many messages from people that yeah. were just speaking positivity in my yeah. life and were being um, so complimentary of, of how my content has touched them. And it was it was really beautiful to just see um, a community of people who have found solace in in spirituality and that they're like willing to share that and you know, everything happens for a reason and at the right time. But I had this moment of like, damn, I should have asked y'all about this woo woo shit before. Like, <laughs> now y'all all in my inbox. I love you. You've changed my life. You're so beautiful. I was like, um, I could have used these messages exactly. like a year ago. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like the, the, the positivity begets the positivity. People have to know that you're receptive to it before they're going to drop it, like, or before they're going to yes. give it. Because especially sometimes you try and say something or you attempt to say something to somebody and you're really connecting in that moment. Like, the God in me sees the God in you and like that. Like, girl, what the fuck? Fuck and off. Like, what? And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, no, it's not true. you then. Like, leave you to whatever you've got and, going and on, you can stay there. <laughs> it's true. And the old me, 1,000%. And yeah. I, it's so funny because my, one of my best girlfriends is very woo. And I love her so much because... Mm we're so different but if i was in her shoes i'd be rubbing my face in this shit if she does it she's like i'm so happy you're here my heart sees your heart your inner yeah. child and i'm like and she just is like she's like i knew i knew it would happen for you yeah. and i'm like well you know i'm i i respect that you let it happen for me rather than to your Forced point it. like forcing it or and or just being respectful of the fact that like that's not who I am Mm because sometimes she would say she'd be like just want you to know we're having like a sister circle I'm not gonna invite you because I know it's not your thing but the but if you want it's and I'm like you know thank you Shamika I will not be at the moon (laughs) sister circle I do not want to dance around under moonlight but thank you so much no I think no no no. (laughs) yeah there's a space for everybody and I think it's um, your entry point you come into when you come into it then you figure out your thing accordingly as much as I would say that yeah I'm rather woo woo I still don't like being around people like that. So, you know, I, I have to do my thing my own way and yeah. leave everybody to what they... But definitely look into your astrology chart because everything is usually contained there, definitely. But I did say... Yeah, that on, was my gateway drug. That was my gateway <laughs> drug is that I got on... I got the Chani app and I started looking at my chart and I started seeing like, oh my God, like some of these things are really resonating with me um so yeah you know it's i think it's hopefully i am a model for others in the sense that you can go at your own pace you don't have to like start dousing yourself in patchouli and wearing like wrinkle skirts you can just and birkenstock and you know i'm never you're not gonna catch me out here in some birkenstocks you can still Um, iron your clothes it's absolutely (laughs) fine (laughs) yeah i'm not i'm not doing all of that but (laughs) at the the natural deodorant no 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 we still doing the aluminum under the, the pits aluminum. like sorry <laughs> but i promised you that's like the next time i see you i'm gonna give you a tarot reading so Ooh. i've got my cards here yes so you can hit me with a question oh my god um it'll be a quick uh, fine one a quick a, a, a question mm-hmm. um 
Okay, here's my question. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be in a space to buy a house in like the next three to five years? Amen. You should, that astrology again is good for that. We need to look at where Jupiter, if Jupiter in the next three to five years is maybe going to touch your fourth house or it's going to be in a house mm. like opposes or um, sextiles your fourth house. The fourth house is that um, house of home and family. So mm. for instance, when my brother had Jupiter in his fourth house, he got, he bought his first apartment. So Jupiter yeah. is the planet that expands and magnifies. Um, mm. So that's what well, I want. Know. I want it to be in the right house so I can have a house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Francesca wants to know, Spirit, whether she'll be in a position to get a house, buy a house in the next three to five years. Honorable ancestors, ascended masters. What do we have? What's the message at this time? So we've got two cards already, and then I've got my third card. Okay. All right, so I'm going to try and show you on the screen what we've got. So the first card is the Two of Swords. We've got the Two of Swords in reverse. Um, you have to be clear on what you want. It feels like, so that's just going off the first card. That, so you have to be clear on what you want. I think that, or what I'm picking up is like, there are possibilities that you've kind of closed yourself off to in terms of where you could possibly be, what you could possibly be, and where you could possibly be, what you could possibly be doing. You have to be open to opportunities that will actually take you to where you need to go. If we're talking about mm -hmm. you want this house, okay, we're talking about this, you want this house, but they offered you to come and do this thing. Oh, it's not really my thing. And I don't I think said, I want to do said, that. No. <laughs> oh, listen, don't drag me. Drag me. If there's one thing I'm going to do, it's say no. I'm like, mm. No, oh, I it's enjoy no it. For no, me. baby. A it's year a pass. No. <laughs> <laughs> the agent email. This one's a pass. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the two of swords in reverse. It's like because you, if you can see the image, she's got like a blindfold mm. over her, and she's got the two oh, swords across okay. her chest. So it's and but then there's a wealth of water behind her, and I think that the reason that that card comes out as well is because there's a lot of emotion in you and uh, you know in with really deep within you and maybe you grew up in an environment where your intellect was valued above your emotions so for instance if you were crying somebody would be like well why are you crying like what's that got to yeah. do with anything so you would just be like suck it up so the reason that that's important now is because there are emotions that are trying to move through you that once they do it will be much more clear what you need to do what you need to accept that's going to allow you to get um, or to be on the path and to get the opportunities that will provide you the money to get the house that you want. It might even be a situation wow. of you just kind of meet the right people and then it's not so hard to get the house because they're like, oh, I was building a development. Yeah. Do you want to get involved or whatever? So the second card we've got, Four of Swords. They're just saying you need to rest, ma'am. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So she's sleeping, but she's still got like a knife with her by her pillow. And so the fact yeah. that you're getting all these swords, it's like, this is air sign energy, right? So you got the four of swords. They're saying like, rest, rest, because it's like you're trying to do, you're trying to, it's like you're micromanaging God and you're micromanaging Oof. your spirit guides. And they're just like, Oof. wait, but you're the one in the human body. You can only I see I literally like just told, I, <laughs> listen, I just said, I facts and figures, cal calendar. I love, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. You're right. Oh my God. Wow. And see, look, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Old me would be like, there's no way, but it's real. Yeah. I am, I, I'm such a, and that's what's been hard about the strike is I love control i yes. crave control yeah. and this idea of like you don't know when it's gonna end yeah. you don't know and the reality is that's everything in our lives you yes. don't know yeah. anything don't know. you yeah. can't control anything mm. but i the feeling of control mm -hmm. makes me feel um like less less anxious yes I guess. And um, knowing the outcome. Yeah. And that's what they're saying. Like, they're like, oh. you need to rest and you can't micromanage your spirit guides. The whole point and your um Shamika, you said, that's your yeah. that's that's one of your soulmates because they were able to hold space for you while you came yeah. into knowing. Um, and I, so I bring that up that there is so much around you. There are so many different types of people and places around you. You gravitated towards moving to LA, not just because of the show business, but I think that there are energetic things as well oh, that yeah. bring you to somewhere where you need to be. And so all of, they're basically saying like, you're cool stop like it's almost insulting like you can't do our job like you can't see what we see we can yeah. see numerous timelines all at the same time you can only see down the road if that so calm yeah. it like relax and then uh. to confirm that they're telling you to relax you've got the seven of pentacles 
in reverse so the seven of pentacles is about patience and you see this figure he's looking up at the oh coins that are God, growing off these the cards are dragging <laughs> me <laughs> oh my god so they're like yeah patience patience like you've got to, you've got to exercise patience so i feel like it's a definite yes you're gonna get your thing but it's, it's gonna happen way more sooner than you actually think if you just get out of your own way like just yeah. let them do what they're doing they've got you they're never gonna steer you wrong even if the, you've had some hard times whatever they may have been you've had hard times getting to this point and there were many times where you just thought what the fuck like why is this yeah. happening to me and yet here you are right the, everything that happened crafted you to be who you are so if we're saying this house in the next three to five years they're like we can do it in four just move yeah yeah no the patience thing is really speaking to me because you know, with the strike and uh, me turning 40, I've definitely been having these feelings of like, everyone's 27 in this business. <laughs> and like, yes. And everybody is like, great, love that for you. Like every person is, and you know, um, jealousy is natural. And yes. I, I think especially with social media, mm -hmm. it's very easy to reduce someone to all of their wins mm -hmm. and all of the stuff that you're seeing that's not giving a full picture of the person mm -hmm. i'm sure someone's doing that to me at the exact same time yes but on the patience tip it's like things happen when they're supposed to happen mm -hmm. and coveting what somebody else has is just keeping you from fulfilling your own personal destiny yeah and that's something that i'm trying to like really remind myself of that like you know i'm still i'm still young i've done a lot of great things i'm going to continue to do great things i'm yeah. fine i can't chase somebody else's bag i can't chase somebody else's career or their yeah. successes i just have to walk in my path and do whatever it is i'm gonna do <sighs> wow i mean yes your next card your final card is um well we've got one more card for you but this final card is called um it says here i've got it from the wisdom of the oracle deck you've got number 40 47 which is funny you got four seven here as in four of swords seven of pentacles and then you've got wow. 47 here as well so there's something about four seven that's probably going to come up so i don't know if whether it will end up being the production company or maybe the street number oh there's God. something about it yeah. that 47 is going to be super relevant for you but let's just see quickly what it says before you have to go 47 it says here, the Oracle's message, to bring your dream to life, you must think long term and pay no attention to the fluctuations <gasps> in the no, current please. of your experience. <laughs> oh, did, did I just? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. God, like this is what I'm talking about. Like, oh my, like, like, not me going full woo on the podcast. It's happening to me right now. I just said that. Literally. And I, you saw oh me just my. shuffling and it popped out. No, I know. Um, <laughs> I know you did. I watched you do it. <gasps> and it says, wow. joy and disappointment co-mingle with opportunities. So there is no need to fear the occasional obstacle. Life is not a sprint. This card is a reminder that you have endurance, strength and fortitude to carry you all the way. Remain true to yourself. Your authenticity. I said that to you right off the bat. Your authenticity alone will keep you in alignment with the energy of miracles. What is yours will never be withheld from you. Remember that. I literally <laughs> just said I can't chase someone Nobody else's else bag. bag. I can't chase somebody else's career. Wow. I just, I mean, the woo is re. I, the woo wait, is wooing, I'm, baby. The woo is I, wooing. Oh, I fought it for so <laughs> long and now you know what it is it's like it's like when someone's tapping you on the shoulder yes. and you're like leave me alone like yes. i feel you tapping and now i finally was like what is it and it's like ma'am we have been trying to get your attention yes <laughs> we've got so much to tell you so much to catch you up on and you'll be like so wow. that was that girl shut the f shut the front door that was why that <gasps> yes you're oh, just meeting up with your yeah. friends you're meeting up with old friends old spiritual friends you've yeah. always been knowing Wow. I, I like, I just can't say thank you enough. I, I know this stuff intrinsically, but it never hurts to hear it again. Yes. And I'm, I'm really trying to just continue to keep myself open to the possibilities and like to that touching on the shoulder moment of like listening because here it is it keeps pop, it ke pop up yeah. in our conversation mm -hmm. and now it's popping up in these cards and i'm like okay i hear you yes. i'm just gonna take it one day at a time and i'm just gonna like go i'm ugh, i'm not a go with the flow girl so i'm really <laughs> gonna try and just go 
I'm like, but what time? Like, what like, time will you the you house just tell come? me. I could be so much more patient if you just let I me know the dates. I could do November. I could do December. I can't do January. I could do Feb. I could I could make space for Feb. Like, I no, just let it happen. Let it happen. Spirit's got you, oh Francesca. God. You've known. Oh. Spirit, like you say, this is just a reminder. Spirit's always had you. Spirit's got you. Like, this is all cool. And I'm wishing all of you, all of you out there, all of the success with the strikes. Like, it means, because what you all do will impact the rest of us. And I'm yes. so thankful to you. So grateful. Because, you know, as a writer, as an actor, all of that over here, it matters. So thank you so, yeah. so much. Oh my God. Well, thank you for giving me a space to share. And if anybody wants to support the strike, if you're in the US, you know, we have picket lines in New York and LA. You can go to WGA contract 2023.org. You can also donate to the entertainment fund, yes. which not only helps writers and actors, but it also helps our crew members, you know, the makeup artists, the hair people, the PAs, anybody who's been impacted by the strike. Um, and we would love to see you on the picket lines or again, just support us through the entertainment fund and to your point if you are feeling restless in your career and you are feeling like why are these motherfuckers not paying us what we are yeah. owed you are probably correct circle up your co-workers start talking amongst yourselves because the shit is trickling down ai yeah. is coming for everybody yes, yeah. you know they are going to continue to take advantage of our labor and we all deserve better and every person i don't care if you work at mcdonald's or you wiping baby's butts at the daycare center every single person deserves a living wage yes amen you're such a babe thank you <laughs> oh my goodness thank you so much for having me this was delightful isn't Francesca a baby girl? That was such a fun conversation. You know, like when you follow someone online for so many years and then finally we get to connect and chat and it was such a mood. It was such a mood. Two slaps on your chest, Francesca, for being a multi-talented, multi-hyphenate baby girl holding it down across the pond. Love that for us. Love that for us. And I can't wait to meet you in person. Um, yeah, beautiful scenes. Absolutely. And it's funny because... I think one of you gifted me Francesca's book and isn't it interesting I feel like some of you with the gifts that you send me on this show you're actually manifesting the people that you want on the show so <laughs> you sense and think quickly who do we need who do we want quickly quickly and start sending those gifts in all right anyway let's move to so you mad Ooh, let me tell you something my enemies will never prosper and what did I sing? When I when I was here, I sang that, Dan Wooten, I'm going to take your job. And what's now happened? Dan Wooten's been su suspended from GB News. Now, they might give it back to him. But now, because a white woman has been disrespected greatly and by what happened on GB News, now GB News is being investigated by Ofcom. But when it was me, Ofcom said that what happened was fair how I was depicted, the backlash from how I was de um, depicted on GB News, how Kwasi Kwarteng spoke about me. Apparently, all of that was fine. But when it's a white woman, it's not fine. I heard recently when I was doing the book signing at Africa Rights Festival, a beautiful, wonderful woman, um, I think she's from the US, she said to me that it really touched her what I said about um, black women and um, there was a, there was a way that I described something at when I was being interviewed by Yomi um, Yomi Shode, and she said it's so uh, timely because there is um, I think she's a US professor a black woman who was giving she was talk she giving a talk and she just dropped down she just dropped down like from it maybe from exhaustion maybe from life whatever but she died. And there's been uproar because they literally carried her away. Once she collapsed, they carried her off and the show carried on or the, the, the talk or whatever, the conference carried on. And that's often what it feels like in this life, doing the things that I do. People treating you like you're 
replaceable, like you're disposable, like, and this is why I prioritize my, I have to prioritize my joy, my peace, my fun, my, I've got to prioritize my pleasure because the fact of the matter is if I get worn down tomorrow, what's going to happen with the number of people that listen to this podcast, right? And all the things that I'm doing, look at the number of Ofcom complaints that went through after what GB News said about me. It's in no way is it proportional at all. But then should something happen um, to me? Oh, it's really sad. I used to love listening to her podcast. She made such a difference to me. But you sat there and watched or listened. So anyway, back to Dan, this little pussy clerk. Glad they took your job, you dickhead. Said here, Dan Wooten has been suspended from GB News following comments made on his show by Lawrence Fox, who asked what self-respecting man would climb into bed with reporter Ava Evans. The broadcaster had earlier suspended Fox for his remarks about politics Joe's Evans during a live show. Evans told the BBC she has since received threats. Wooten, one of the channel's most high profile presenters, because it's it's a rag, it's a shit show, said in an apology that he should have intervened. The channel called the insult totally unacceptable and said it was conducting a full investigation. Meanwhile, Fox, also a host on the channel, has said he stands by every word of what I said. But he's now taking it back. <laughs> now he's apologized because <laughs> you're, you're not that brave. You're not. He made the comments discussing political journalist Evans views on creating a minister for men to tackle mental health crisis. And it's funny to me when men will be like, oh, yeah whenever we're talking about women's things they'll be like oh yeah but men suffer too but now when a serious um, suggestion is being made that okay should there be a minister that deals with the issues that men are going through and then in response to that you're wishing violence on Ava what so you don't want men to get help okay Addressing those comments on Dan Wooten tonight on Tuesday, Fox said, we're past the watershed so I can say this. Show me a single self-respecting man that would climb into bed with that woman ever, ever. What's funny is that he's chatting shit. He absolutely would because she's a fairly attractive white woman. She's got all the signifiers. She's got light eyes. She's got um, blonde hair. She's slim. Like, you're chatting shit. You're chatting shit. Um, that little woman has been fed, spoon fed oppression day after day. We need powerful, strong, amazing women who make great points for themselves. We don't need these sorts of feminist 4.0s. They're pathetic and embarrassing, uh, embarrassing. Who would want to shag that? Wooten could be seen smiling and laughing throughout Fox's remarks before in a touch of balance saying Evans regretted her comments and calling her a very beautiful woman. Um, Talking about Fox's insult, Evans told the BBC newscast podcast it made her feel disgusting and vile that the last 24 hours have been really nasty. And it's funny, she gets a platform to talk about the nastiness of what was said about her, but there was no platform to talk about the nastiness that was said about me. And one wayward individual was like, yeah, but what was said about her was sexual. Do you think that... Wait. But violence is violence, no? 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 And do you think that the people who are, were then sending me all horrible messages and threats weren't, they didn't add sexual things to that? You didn't, you don't think so? Oh, because I'm black. Yeah, so it's fine. It's fine. Um. Anyway, she talks on and I think that what happened to her, what he said was absolutely abhorrent, disgusting. And But I've wanted Lawrence Fox, um, Dan Wooten off the airwaves for a very long time, for quite a while. They shouldn't be on there. They're a danger. They shouldn't be on there. So I'm not shocked that he would say something so vile. And I'm glad that something is being done. To me, it's just heartbreaking that it always takes something happening to a white woman for people to take things seriously. Um, but anyway, what was really hilarious to me about this situation is that initially Dan Wilson put out an, what's it, an apology and said, oh, I should have intervened. It was totally unacceptable what was said. And then Lawrence Fox put out a screenshot of their iMessage conversation where basically they were kicking together that, that it was said. And he clearly believed that he was going to get away with it. And I'm glad that Lawrence Fox did that because there's no, there's no honor amongst pussy clots. There's no honor amongst bigots. So 
there you go. You try to snake and then you got snaked and both of you are off. I heard Calvin Robinson, that wayward one, is possibly suspended too, but I don't actually know. But they might let Dan come back, but they will struggle. It's a white woman you offended this time. Um, a slim, like, and it's funny because it makes sense that it's a white woman that they're going up for because my comments were about a white blonde woman with light eyes that looks similar to Ava in that way. And I was calling out the way that in the ways in which the media goes to protect white women and will not speak about them, especially if they look a particular way, they will not speak about them in a disparaging way. They'd rather feign shock when they hear of violence being committed in this and that way. That was the premise of my video. So it's not shocking to me then that it's a white woman that they're coming up for and being like, no, again, we've got to this one. This is my exact point. They go to protect white femininity whether it's a baby killer or whether somebody who has been spoken about disgustingly when it comes to white women they're going to protect them so even me as a black woman when I'm speaking sense I get attacked when I've done bad or when women like me have done bad we get attacked so we don't we don't ever get afforded like our care we don't and I'm going to give an example um very very shortly but in the case of um Eliane rest in peace baby girl a black girl is knife to death right and instead of talking about femicide the very specific gendered violence that women and girls face it's now being collapsed into simply knife crime and th this is the exact point that this is why it's a problem but we'll get to that shortly but dan ha Ha, my enemies will never prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me must fall. And whether if it if it was a white woman that it took to get you lot off, then so be it. But sometimes let it be from what you've done the first time. But whatever. Whatever. Anyway, moving on from one fuckery to the next fuckery. British Museum asks the public and experts to help recover stolen artifacts. Last month, a member of staff was sacked. And the police launched an investigation after around 2,000 treasures were reported missing, stolen or damaged over a significant period of time. The museum has now said most are Greek and Roman gems and jewellery and shared pictures of similar items. 60, 60 objects have been returned. In a statement, the museum added that 300 more had been identified and are due to be returned imminently. In an attempt to recover the rest, it has put details and images of the types of obj um, objects that are missing on its website. If you are concerned that you may be or have been in possession of items from the British Museum, or if you have any other information that may help us, please contact us, the website said. As well as classical Greek and Roman gems, there are rings, earrings and other pieces of jewellery, some dating back to the late Bronze Age. The museum also said it would work alongside an international panel of experts to identify and recover the items and had placed them on the art loss register. James Ratcliffe, director of, director of recoveries at the art loss register, said the museum had carefully balanced the need to provide information to the public to assist the recovery efforts with the fact that providing too much detail risks playing into the hands of those who might act in bad faith. How did the how did the British Museum get the artifacts if it wasn't for acting in bad faith themselves? What goes around comes around, baby. And let me tell you something. I'm going to look for those items. <laughs> and when I find them, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear them. Because let me tell you, that gold little brooch looks lit. I'm going to wear it. I'm not giving it back to you. That's not how this works. If you send me on this task, it's not. I'm not bringing anything back to you. Oh my God, help us find stolen items. Have you checked your building? Have you checked the many rooms in your building? There are numerous stolen items still there. Let's look at those. Because while Pluto is in Aquarius, you know, whew, you're going to lose more things. I, I hate to break it to you. Pluto hasn't even settled in Aquarius and you're already getting jacked. You're going to lose so many more things once we hit 2024. And I, for one, will laugh because you can't keep taking the people them things and then not returning it. Talking about we're custodians and we're looking after it. We're stewards and we're looking after it. Now look, now look, you done lost it. 
nonsense and ingredients. I love that for you. Keep losing the things. Um, so if you see me with a cute brooch at my next live show in April, don't ask me no questions. Okay. If you see me with a bling bling yaring, don't ask me no questions. Okay. I get it how I get it. Um, Oh, this was really interesting that I put here. The New York State, what is it here? New York State, oh, why am I not able to read this like a normal person? The New, New York State has banned the use of facial recognition technology in schools weeks after a report concluded that the risks to student privacy and civil rights outweighed potential security benefits. Um, the Education Commissioner, Betty Rosa's um, order leaves decisions on digital fingerprinting and other biometric technology up to local districts. No school in the state of New York shall purchase or utilise facial recognition technology, Rosa's order stated. The state has had a um, um, moratorium on facial recognition since 2020 after parents filed a court challenge to its adoption by the Lockport Central School District. Lockport activated its systems in January 2020 after meeting conditions set by the state education officials at the time, including that no students be entered into the database of potential threats. The district stopped using the $1.4 million system later that year. Imagine you've spent $1.4 million and then you can't even use the thing. You better take it home and start doing different facial expressions. Lockport officials said the idea behind the use of the technology was to enable security officers to quickly respond to the appearance of disgruntled employees, sex offenders or certain weapons the system was programmed to detect. But an, um, but an analysis issued last month by the Office of Information Technology Services acknowledges that the risks of the use of facial rec recognition technology in an educational setting may outweigh the benefits. The report noted the potentially higher rate of false positives for people of colour, non-binary and transgender people, women, the elderly and children. So pretty much most people. So no. It also cited research that found that 70% of school, um, school shootings from 1980 to 2019 were current students facial recognition technology the report said may only offer the appearance of safer schools so stop playing about basically they said stop trying it like they're current students you don't have to be like oh it's people who are coming into the building that we don't know from adam the call is coming from in the, the shots are coming from inside the house yeah coming from inside the school that's what you need to worry about yeah 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 so um was that that i think that was everything for my little note i mean i read a story about somewhere in america where they've stopped um this fund this venture capital fund that goes solely to black women they've been stopped from operating because they said that it is discriminatory to only give this and um, these funds to black women even though 0.0.0.0 nor two four or something like that i could have the stats wrong but basically much less than one percent way less than one percent of people who receive venture capital funding are black women so if this fund wants to specifically give to black women what is your fucking problem why can't we have anything what's your problem so I hope that gets sorted soon. Anyway, let's move on to a straw of the week, aka suck your mum. So I've already said that it's very sad to me the way that this murder of Eliane Andam has been treated. Um, there's a GoFundMe page to donate to funeral costs and all of those things. I've donated. They've, you, you can go and check it out um, to support this. They've passed their target, but, you know, let's all just rally around and show love. It says here, a 17-year-old boy has appeared in court charged with murdering 15-year-old Eliane Andam in South London. This happened last week um, in Croydon outside Whitgift Centre. I think she was on a bus initially. I could be wrong. The boy, who cannot legally be named because of his age, is also charged with possessing a kitchen knife in a public space without good reason. Eliane was stabbed to death at a bus stop on Wellesley Road in central Croydon on Wednesday morning as she made her way to school. He did not indicate how he would plead to the charges, his lawyer said. The boy was remanded in youth detention when he appeared at youth court at Croydon Magistrates Court. He's due to appear at the Old Bailey on Tuesday. 
relatives visited the scene of the attack on Wellesley Road on Thursday with a large group of um, with a large group gathering next to a bus stop inside the police cordon. Members of the group embraced as flowers were placed on the ground. Police, paramedics, and air ambulance were called to reports of the stabbing near the Whitgift Centre at about eight thirty. Um, on Wednesday morning, but Eliane died shortly afterwards. The year 11 pupil at Old Palace of John Whitgift School in Croydon had just got off a double-decker bus with a group of friends when she was attacked. The witnesses said the bus driver and other passengers tried to save her. A statement issued on behalf of Eliane's family said, we as a family are struggling to comprehend this painful tragedy that has happened to our beautiful daughter and beloved sister Eliane. Our hearts are broken and we are overwhelmed by sorrow and grief. Our faith in the Lord is strengthening us. We would like to express our gratitude to those who have taken the time to send us thoughtful and compassionate prayer and messages and prayers. And the statement added, Eliane was a beautiful person inside and out who loved Jesus. She was intelligent, thoughtful, kind and had a bright future ahead. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said he was shocked and appalled at Eliane's death and that sentences for knife related crimes should be tough and fuck off. Everyone will be looking at that and be shocked as I am, appalled by what's happened and quite frankly angry. It just illustrates the importance of clamping down on knife crime. And there, I don't care what happens with this podcast going forward, but I just want to say a massive fuck you, you fucking prick to Rishi Sunak and fuck any other political party who struggles with my direct manner of speech. You lot want to dance around um, very very important urgent um, conversations you want to do that you do that on your time I'm not going to do it on my time okay this is my podcast I'll say what I want fuck you you prick to reduce what is happening to simply talking about knife crime to push your anti-black agenda you fucking dickhead it will never ever ever be well with you and the rest of your family it will never be well with you may you at some point just crumble into a pile of salt you bitch this is about gendered violence this is about violence against women and girls this is about femicide and you turned around and went oh knife crime of course a knife was involved but if that boy didn't have a knife guess what we saw what was online the other week about a black woman who was hit in the face and um, with a brick because she turned a guy down or whatever it, it can be a brick it can be a car it can be anything. The issue is not the tool that is used. The issue is the violence, is the inherent misogyny that is being socialized into men and boys. That 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 is the issue. And a massive at the same time, fuck you to the media. So desperate to get this girl's name and um, um, get her name, get a picture of her that you gave us the wrong spelling of the name. Some of us are saying um, R.I.P. Eliana, the way that we even spelt it, because we were going off what you we would think that you as journalists would know um, would know how to journal. We would think that you as reporters would know how to report. But because you're behaving like rabid, disgusting hyenas, you're going, you're trawling through friends' pages and whatever, grabbing a picture that her family didn't even want you to use. You can't spell her name right. What is the rush? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are we going as a society? Like, what the fuck is even any of this? I am disgusted. I don't have too much else to say about it because it just made me so sad the day that um, I read about it, that it happened. It just made me so, so sad. I don't have the words. Sometimes I don't have the words. Yeah. Thank you for saying, oh, you're eloquent. You're artic I don't have the words. All I have is sadness at the state of the world and how little um, girls and women are protected in this society and how rampant misogyny is and male violence i i don't know what to tell you rest in peace eliane i can't get my head around i can't comprehend um having your life snatched away from you in such a horrid way having it snatched away from you at all but in such a horrid i don't have the words i am so so sorry baby girl i am so so sorry my final straw of the week goes out to the Catholic Archdiocese of Baltimore. 
Um, the Archdiocese of Baltimore on Friday filed for Chapter 2 bankruptcy um, reorganization days before a new state law goes into effect, removing the statute of limitations on child sex abuse claims and allowing victims to sue their abusers decades after the fact. The step will allow the oldest diocese in the United States to equitably compensate victim survivors of, um, sexual, child, of child sexual abuse. While the local Catholic Church continues its mission and ministries, Archbishop William E. Laurie said in a statement posted on the Archdiocese website, but attorneys and advocates said the church is simply trying to protect its assets and silence abuse victims by halting all civil claims against the Archdiocese and shifting the process to bankruptcy court, um, a less transparent forum. Um, Michael McDonnell, interim executive director of the National Group Survivors Network of those abused by priests, said the Baltimore Archdiocese is following in the footsteps of other jurisdictions across the country that have simply um, similarly um, similarly sought bankruptcy protection to offset settlement costs and avoid further scrutiny. Catholic bishops are employing the same deception from coast to coast, he said, covering up child sex offences while maintaining the ministry of the abusers. Next, oppose any modifications to the statute of limitations that might make those offences more visible. Finally, go to the federal bankruptcy courts and act as though you have run out of money when secular laws offer a window to justice. When will church officials make true amends? While the archdiocese itself can't be sued now, other entities such as Catholic schools and individual parishes still can under the new state law, which goes into uh, effect on Sunday. Maryland lawmakers passed the law in April, weeks after the um, state attorney general released a nearly 500 page investigative report detailing the scope of child sexual abuse and cover up within the nation's oldest Catholic um, diocese. The report lists more than 150 clergy um, who are um, credibly accused of abusing over 600 victims dating back several decades. It paints a damning picture of the archdiocese. Um, Rob Jenner, a Baltimore attorney representing abuse victims, said the bankruptcy decision deals them yet another blow. The fact that church leaders waited until the last minute adds insult to injury because victims spent months getting their hopes up, meeting with lawyers and reliving the abuse, he said. It's just, enough, it's just a further locking of the file cabinet doors to keep victims from seeing the full weight and scope of wrongdoing. It's, defe it's so defeating. Jenna held a press conference earlier Friday to, pre um, to preview some of the lawsuits he plans to file. One of the plaintiffs, Kimberly Mills Bonham, will see her case relegated to bankruptcy court because the school where her alleged abuse occurred has since closed. Mills Bonham alleges abuse at the hands of Father Joseph Maskell, one of the most notorious abusers named in the Attorney General's report, starting when she was nine. Maskell is featured in the Netflix docuseries The Keepers about child sex and um, sexual abuse and a cover up in the Baltimore Archdiocese. Um, Mills Bonham was crushed when she received the bankruptcy news, Jenna said. She saw it as yet another form of abuse, he said. She does not understand how they can get away with this. Um, so a, a massive just suck out, burn in hell, you bitches. Like, once we start to have real conversations about how religion is used, um, as a shelter for abusive, specifically abusive men, then I'll know that we're really talking. Until then, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. What a piece of sh what a piece of shit this society is. Wow. That's all I got. That is all I've got for you. That's it. That's it. Hopefully I'll see most of you, uh, quite a lot of you on Saturday, 1 p.m. at um, Peckham Playground in Peckham. Um, starting at 1 p.m., like I said, 7th of October. Um, you've got 60 seconds to come on stage and say whatever is your, on your mind. I'll limit it to how many people. So it's going to be first come, first served. You just um, queue by the stage and you get to say your mind. Um yeah thank you for continuing to um 
uh, order edge of here i'm loving to see i'm loving all of the pictures that i'm seeing and all of your reviews coming in it's absolutely beautiful thank you to afwa hirsch for her wonderful glowing review on her instagram page of edge of here it touches me deeply um yeah I don't know I feel like I've drawn a blank I hope you enjoyed this week's episode I really tried to give you all that I had even my vocal cords when I was singing the rendition that Portia and Chris sent in um what else is happening yeah there's a list of um panels that I'm on going forward but our focus is Saturday 7th of October all right so the link will be in the show notes and um, for you to get your tickets and that's that child i am exhausted it's time to have a good sleep and then you know meet the week where i meet it i hope that you all take really really good care of yourselves because i know that shit's not easy i rate you all for continuing as we do with this thing called life right so i have been kelechi okafo oh and of course thank you to francesca ramsey the baby girl for joining me on today's episode but i have been kelechi okafo and this has been sym officially known as say your mind unofficially known as what what archdiocese of baltimore suck your mum. peace it's the Benz Brunani woman is baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this. Baby, sit down, sit down, receive this realness. Make sure your cup's ready for the tea, we are go sippy, yo. Hard time scrolling for your long shorts. You might learn something you never know. Could let you find, and she's one of a kind. Don't say you mind, say you mind.